Hello everyone and welcome back to a wonderful world of Minecraft. Yes, uh, I know it's been a little while. We wanted a bit of a hiatus, but I thought today would be a good chance to come back into our Command uh, Basics series for the channel. Last time we took a look at the specifications of teleporting with commands uh, in Minecraft. So today I thought we'd actually take a look at a huge slew of lesser known commands, overlooked commands, but all of them have to do with multiplayer and world generation or world setup. So I thought it'd be a good time to just get those out of the way and I'll just give a brief explanation of what each command is and what it can be used for. For usual, if you have any questions or suggestions on other command videos to make, Go ahead and leave them down in the comments, but without further ado, let's get started. So, with Minecraft world generation, especially when you're making maps for other players or multiplayer servers, can actually have a lot of default commands that you can set up before the world is populated by people to help your players have a better experience. The first of these is the default game mode command. So you type it like that, and as you could imagine, it allows you to set a default game mode for your world, either Adventure, Creative, Spectator, or Survival. Now, this command is best used for worlds that many players haven't joined yet, or if you plan on exporting this map later on, as it just sets the default game mode, or the one that players have when they first join a world. If you set this after players have joined the world, it won't retroactively change them to the specified game mode. For example, I'm in creative right now, but if I set this world to adventure mode, you can see that I am still in creative mode, but any new players that join will automatically be put in adventure mode. Again, it's kind of niche, but it's good for a first time world setup, especially if you want players to play in something other than survival on a multiplayer server. You can load up the world and quick set the default game mode to creative or adventure. I wouldn't recommend spectator unless you guys are just, you know, using the world to experiment and fly through box, but Either way, that is the first command. The second command that falls under a similar category is the slash difficulty command. Similarly, you can type it like this, or you can just type slash D and then press tab until you see it. Uh, and this allows you to change the difficulty of a world. Now this does actually change retroactively. So you can see right now my world is actually on normal mode. If I just hit enter with difficulty, you can see that it actually comes out and says that, which is nice and handy to check what your world is on. But if I go ahead and type slash difficulty and then maybe put in peaceful, you'll notice that the spider and all other hostile mobs completely disappear. Now, this can be used uh, when you're first creating your world if you want to change the difficulty to hard or easy, or maybe you do want all your friends to play on peaceful mode. However, it can also be used in certain adventure situations. For example, you could have a world on hard, and then as soon as a player reaches a rest area, they step on a command block that changes the world to peaceful mode, getting rid of all other mobs around them. You have to be careful because this will delete all hostile loaded mobs on your server. So if you have bosses loaded later on, they, they will get removed uh, when you set it to peaceful. So just keep that in mind. But it can be used for things like rest sites or changing the difficulty to harder or easier depending on the region of the world you go to. Our third command of the day is going to be the slash locate command. You can go ahead and type it like that. And if you press space, you can see that it wants to autofill with many different structures in Minecraft. So as you might be able to guess, this command is really useful for map makers to be able to find pre-generated structures in the world. Or if you just want to test things out or even explore in creative mode to, to check out certain features. For example, why don't we go ahead and look to see if we can find a pillager outpost. And if we go ahead and press enter, not only does it tell you that there is one, it actually highlights in green. So if you click on this in chat, you'll automatically teleport to the closest pillager outpost, which you can actually see is right over there. So if I go ahead and click on this and press enter, we are teleported to the coordinates close to the pillager outpost. And here we go. You can actually see it. Uh, this can be used with all naturally generating structures uh, in Minecraft, and some you might not even think about. Nether fossils are in here, which was the one that surprised me, um, but you can just sort of pan through and see a whole bunch of different structures if you want to do any testing. Our next command of the day is the locate biome command. This one is quite similar to slash locate and can help when testing or if you're making your own mod and you want to find your own biome that you've put in. However, this one, instead of finding structures, as the name would imply, it finds biomes. Once again, it doesn't just find normal Minecraft biomes. If you actually have mods installed and know the namespace, you can type in, for example, biomes aplenty. 
as the namespace and it would come up with uh, the biomes of plenty biomes. But as we have Minecraft, just the default vanilla here with a couple of um, vanilla plus mods just for showcase, we can pick a biome that we want to find nearby. Let's see if there's any deserts. And if I press enter, you can see that 4,000 blocks away there is a desert. But once again, I can just click to teleport and it might take a minute to load. Well, that's odd. I'm pretty sure this isn't a desert, but uh, you do you, Minecraft. There we go. This is much more like it. Uh, so it does take you to the nearest desert. Apparently, sometimes Minecraft has some biome discrepancies. Uh, but here is the desert once I moved a little bit away and ran the command again. So you can use it to locate all sorts of different biomes. Very, very useful for testing. The next command we have on our list is a bit of a niche one. It is the slash publish command. I just figured that I would go over it as this technically does have to do with world creation and generation, but I've never used this one myself, and I can't really think of many circumstances where you'd want to use this. But sure enough, if you type slash publish, it allows you to open your game to LAN or to allow other people on your same network to connect without having to run a server or anything like that. Now, for those of you that have played Minecraft for a long time and have used local features before, you know that there is actually a button to just do this in the menu. The one good thing that the publish command can do is you can actually put it on a specific port. So this is where things get a little bit technical, but if you know what ports your internet and local network have open, you can open this game on a specific port. For example, the default Minecraft one is 25565. But if I wanted to, I could say I'm going to publish this on my open port of 77. You can now see this multiplayer game is hosted on port 77. So that way, when other people want to come and connect, as long as my port 77 is open, they can just open their local games in multiplayer and my world should pop up. Again, this is a much more niche command, but I figured I'd include it in case people were curious as to what it actually did. Now, this next one certainly falls under the category of right when you make a world uh, to change things about it so when other players join, they don't have to worry about it or you don't have to do it retroactively. But this next command is set world spawn. Once again, here is how you type it. And as you might guess, this allows you to set the spawn point of the world. So if you spawn when you generate a new world in a rather unfortunate location or in the middle of the ocean or in a jungle, and you'd rather set the spawn point to a very uh, high effort spawn location for everyone on your server, you can stand where you want and type in slash set world spawn, and you can just use the local coordinates of where you are standing. You can even have the angle that they are facing, uh, which is an interesting input, should you want to do that. But regardless, you can put the world spawn, hit enter, and now everyone that joins the world or doesn't have their spawn point set uh, in a bed will now respawn where your world spawn is. Just to showcase that, if we go ahead and kill ourselves there, unfortunately, oh, lost my command block. Uh, sure enough, we spawned at the world spawn without setting my spawn anywhere else. But what if we did want to set a specific player's spawn point instead of having them just go back to the world spawn all the time and you wanted to set it up? You didn't want them to use beds to set their spawn points or if you're playing a parkour puzzle, you want to set checkpoints and things like that in case they die. Well, sure enough, there's a command for that too. If we go ahead and just type slash spawn point, you can use this with a selector or just yourself to set the spawn point of a specific player. In this case, we can just say the nearest player if we want, and then you can set the coordinates of the spawn point, for example, right where I'm standing. So I have this little checkpoint right here. Sure enough, I have a command block that says the exact same thing we typed. And now even though our world spawn is there, I just set my new spawn point. So even if I have a bed elsewhere and go back to survival once more, and respawn, you can see that indeed I have respawned on this checkpoint. As you can see, this is pretty useful for adventure maps or multiplayer servers where you have different events going on and you don't want to set all the players spawn to certain areas, or maybe you do for different things that you have going on globally on your server. Either way, the slash spawn point command will change all players, specific players spawn points whenever you need to. So this next command we're going to talk about actually has many different uses and can actually do some funky math in Minecraft, but we're just going to talk about it at a general scale, and that is the slash time command. So once you type slash time, you can see that there's a couple different parameters that it wants to automatically fill. 
The first one, add, simply lets you add a number of days, seconds, ticks into your Minecraft world. So if we want, for example, I can add 200 ticks and the time changes, albeit barely. Not many. As you can see, we're changing the time a little bit and the sun's moving ever so slightly. However, if I change it to 2000 ticks, there you go, the sun's moved a little bit more. But if you don't want to do the math of 20 ticks to one second, you can also just change this to S for seconds, and that will actually change by 2000 seconds, which is pretty cool. And additionally, you can add days, but that doesn't have much of an effect unless you're keeping track of the actual days in your Minecraft world. But that is just the first part of the time command. The second part of the time command is the query. So you can use time query plus another parameter to actually check different times in your game. For example, now that we set our day to at least 2000 and we do time query day, you can see that uh, it looks like it is currently day 2002 in this current world. Congratulations, everyone. We made it. You can also query the day time to see what time of day it is or the ticks in Minecraft. And you can see right now it's 517. I also have my time pause, so it should stay at 517 for a little while. And finally, you can also time query the game time, which I'm pretty sure is how long this world has been going for. And at this case, it says 138,000 ticks. Um, yeah, this one will keep going, regardless if you have your daytime paused or not. This query thing is actually where the math can come into play, because you can check with command blocks certain times of day, you can query how many days have passed, and then you can pass it through to things like scoreboards. So you can say only if the game time is, you know, 200,000 in this world, certain events will happen. Or as soon as day 100 hits, you can have certain mobs trigger and things like that. So the query command is actually quite cool, but it can get a little advanced, and we might talk about it once we actually do our scoreboards video. And the final, and in my opinion, most useful part of the time command is time set. This actually just allows you to specifically set the time without having to worry about guessing with seconds and ticks and all that kind of stuff. So specifically for our purposes, we can just go ahead and write time set noon. And luckily, Minecraft knows when that is. As you can see, it does actually tell you the ticks as well, which is 6,000. And there you go. You can set it to day, night, uh, noon, and midnight if you want to. Which, again, can be helpful when setting up your server if you want the time to always be noon. Or if players are getting fed up with fighting during the night, you can just quickly set it to morning. Alright, so most of you probably already knew about the time command. I just wanted to delve a little deeper. In addition, we will be doing the same thing with the slash weather command. So this one also has quite a few parameters in Minecraft. You can see that we have clear, rain, and thunder. Now, all of these are pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about clear in just a second. So right off the bat, if we want, we can type slash weather rain. And just like that, it will cause the weather to change to a rain. And very atmospheric with these shaders, actually. It's kind of kind of hard to see. And also we're in a savanna, which is not <laughs> not really the best place to uh, to show this off. There we go. Now that we're back in the fields. You can also change it to thunder if you want. And now it says it will do rain and thunder. I guess you can't really have one without the other. So there we go. So we now have a thunderstorm. Now, slash weather clear does work the way you might expect it to. It will clear all current weather effects. So if Minecraft ever does have other weather effects, clear should just get rid of everything. But what you can do is you can actually change the time or how long you want the weather to stay clear for. This can be super useful when you're playing on a cheat friendly server and it is raining all the time. As the server admin or operator, you can just say, all right, I don't want rain for at least, you know, 99,999 ticks. I think it might go one more. Yeah. And then it doesn't like more than that. So sure enough, if I type that, it will still say set the weather to clear, but what the game doesn't tell you is for the next, what did I say, 999,999 ticks, uh, we won't see any type of weather, which is quite nice. So we can just keep it like that. This does also work for things like rain. If you wanted to have it rain for all eternity, like some psychotic demon that you are, you can do that as well, although I wouldn't recommend it. And finally, the last world's altering command that we're going to talk about today is a bit of an interesting one, but it has enough of a niche category that I figured I would talk about it and delve into it a little deeply. And that is the world border command. So if you go ahead, you can type in slash world border, and then you get a bunch of different parameters. 
We're going to go through these in the simplest way that I can let you know. So just like the time command, you have add and set, which will do kind of just like we did with time. You can either add numbers to the world border, or you can just specifically set it if you know a specific size. Now, if you don't know what a world border is in Minecraft, uh, you might have seen it in some challenge maps before. I'll just go ahead and set it to 30, um, and we won't worry about that extra time parameter just for a second, just so you can see what it looks like. It's this big sort of barrier looking thing. Uh, the shaders make it black, although I believe it's usually blue, so it won't always look this dark. But regardless, this is a world border in Minecraft. And what this does is you can actually set it, you get that red um, vignette around the borders of your screen once you get close to it. And sometimes you can leave the world border as well, which will actually grant you damage uh, if you have done so. Um, which, you know, is good for certain maps like Skyblock um, and other challenge maps. But something that's really cool that you can do is we have this world border here. But like I said, we have an add command. So if I type slash world border add, let's say we'll give it a distance, an additional distance of 10 over the course of 10 seconds. You can watch the world border actually grows and it grows in real time as well, which is really cool. So you can set up challenge maps where after players complete certain objectives or scoreboards, the world border, their small little space that they're in, can expand and grow. Again, pretty niche, uh, but I figured I would mention it. Um, and you can change all sorts of things like when it starts warning you about getting close to the world border. You can change the damage. You can change what coordinates uh, the center of the world border is at. But the one thing that I did want to mention uh, was the fact that there is actually no remove command for the world border. Uh, once you set it in your world, even if it's accidental, you can't really get rid of it except for a workaround. It seems that the max uh, radius or distance covered with the world border is 30 million, I think that is. So if you type world border set 30 million, it gets rid of it. I, I think even if you went that far out, it, it wouldn't exist. Um, so there you go. That is how you can get rid of a world border. But that's just going to about do it for today. That is all the time we have. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, today we just wanted to show you some more commands that would help you with your world generation or on multiplayer servers. And I figured it was kind of good to group these all together. If there's any that you want me to delve a little deeper into, like the slash time command, you can let me know down in the comments below. But I think I'll make a couple more videos uh, with this style in mind, because there is a good slew of commands that can really be explained grouped together rather quickly than needing each its own 15 minute video. Coming up on the horizon, I am working on an in-depth scoreboard video, which of course is a command that needs its own 30 minute video, if not a mini series on, because scoreboards are probably the most versatile game maker's tool within Minecraft, uh, and they deserve a lot of explanation to get right, and you can learn all sorts of cool stuff you can do with them. I also have our mini boss making tutorial revamped, um, with pastebin examples explained, and hopefully a map download once it's all finished, so you can look forward to that coming out as well. And per usual, if you guys have any suggestions or anything that you want me to take a look at in Minecraft, please just leave it down in the comments. But Thank you all for watching so much. Leave a like on the video if any of this stuff was new to you or if it helped. It does help out the channel. And until next time, guys, see ya!